Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyeks Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. The Bible in Hosea 6-2 says, In a short time, He will restore us so that we may live in His presence. Father, we honor you today and I ask for restoration for all your children that require restoration in one area or the other. As I stretch forth your hands, Lord, and restore, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me start by asking a question. How do you know a son that is foolish? Well, one of the signs is that that son is the person who would have an inheritance but would not bother to fight for it. He would just allow the inheritance left by his father to go to waste or to go to hoodlums or to go to, you know, another cause that the father did not plan for it to go to. You know, like how the father will labor so much, work so hard, and the intention of the father is to leave a financial inheritance or a property or land or something for his son. The father father would be pained if he could see that after his death, the son was living in abject poverty and squalor while the house or the money he left for his son, you know, has been given over to something else. The father, if he could see him from the other side of life, would be very sad because he would say, oh God, why did I now, you know, labor and do all of that only to leave the inheritance for his son that foolishly lost the inheritance. But you know, that is exactly how many Christians are. We do have an inheritance in Christ. We have treasures that we have just because we have a relationship with Jesus. And you see, this inheritance is a lot. It ranges from divine health to ability to pray for the sick and get them healed to the ability to carry the presence of God to gaining divine direction, to gaining divine wealth, to gaining divine security, access to the ministry of angels, you know, the ability to, you know, to access the raw power of God. The Bible says that we are transformed from the dominion of darkness into God. God's kingdom. In fact, the list goes on and on and up. Paul says to us in Ephesians 3 8, he says, Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, he has graciously given me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. So he was saying that the treasures in Christ, they are endless. Another translation, which is King James, calls it the unsearchable riches of Christ. In other words, if you start naming them, if you start searching them, you can't exhaust the treasures in Christ. But question, how many of these treasures are actually working in your life? If you look through all the things that God has promised will work in the life of believers, if you look through the list of inheritance, if you look through the list of promises that God has reserved for his people, the question you should ask yourself, how many of them do I see working in my life? And if you notice that you have very few of the inheritance of Christ that is working in your life, the next question is, what exactly are you doing about fighting for what legally and spiritually belongs to you? If you're not doing anything about number one, finding what is your inheritance in Christ, finding what is your right and your privilege in Christ, then you are like the foolish son we discussed at the beginning. That is a son who has a massive inheritance, but is living in abject poverty because he refused to fight for his inheritance. Do you know that you have certain privileges because you are a child of God? You know, if a boy or a girl is a child of a king, there are certain privileges that are for that king's son. That's for the prince or for the princess. It's not available to all the citizens in the country, but the prince and the princess, they have certain privileges. It would be terrible if though they are princes and princesses, they do not take advantage of their privilege. If you look at them, you'll be like, wow, this prince and princess, they're actually very foolish people. So God wants you to understand what your rights in Christ are, what your privilege in Christ is. And if you're not seeing it at work, then you need to fight for it. One of your privileges, for instance, is to deal with the powers of darkness. So when you see the enemy harassing your life and you're praying about it and all of that, you're not begging. This is your privilege as a child of God. Jesus paid the price so that you'll be able to address the harassment of Satan. How does Satan harass you? Through sickness, through disease, through stagnation, through confusion, when you don't have direction in your life, you just feel, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. That's him in operation. He's bringing confusion. You see some people, they are in some state of depression. They are not happy and all of that. It is the enemy that is throwing that. I know depression is a spirit because the Bible talks about the spirit of heaviness. The Bible says that one of the reasons Jesus was anointed is 
to deal with the spirit of heaviness. You find that in the scripture in Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. That's Jesus talking. He said, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. You know, so when you see these signs I'm about to read, know that the enemy is at war. But God has given you the privilege to deal with it. He said to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent it to bind up the broken hearted so there is a spiritual solution to broken heartedness he said to proclaim freedom to the captives what kind of captives he's not talking about those in physical jails no he's talking about people who are captives to sin captives to addiction captives to all sorts of things the bible said that there is you know freedom for the captives are you bound in any way are you addicted to anything it is your privilege to bind the hand of the devil he continues by saying and to release the prisoner from darkness verse 2 says to proclaim the year of the lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all who mourn in zion he continues by saying and to provide for those who grieve in zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning another translation says you know talks about the spirit of heaven and that's in king james and all of that so what happened okay let me continue he said and to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of of despair let's read it from new king james version it said the oil of joy instead of mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven is that's dealing with depression so if you are depressed or any of these things is operating in your life that you have been given the privilege to buy the hand of the devil and come out of that addiction come out come out of that depression come out of you know that poverty come out of any thing that god did not promise you why are you doing that that you're doing it because you have a privilege in christ so how many of the rights and the privileges and the treasures and the inheritance in christ are you seeing in your life and are you fighting for your inheritance if you are not fighting for your inheritance what it simply means is that jesus is looking down and he's saying this is so unfair i paid a heavy price to set these people free i paid a heavy price so that they can have this massive inheritance why is this man or why is this woman you know wasting the inheritance that i paid with my blood so look at your life and you know find out the ones that are not working in your life it is your right and privilege you can go to god and talk to him about it and if you see where the enemy is at work you bind him and command him to loose his hold off your life and off your destiny in the name of jesus let me remind you about the truth hill university the truth hill university actually is our online university and we have students from all over the world because it's online anybody can log on and it is a university that gives you access to the foundational doctrines of christ it will help you grow deeper in the Lord. It will help you to understand the scriptures better. But the beautiful thing about the university is that it's a mentorship university. So we're very big on mentorship. So every student is placed under a mentor uh, called the academic advisor so they can take you through you know spiritual grooming and all of that you don't want to miss it the next session starts first of september registration closes on the 29th so to register if you're interested you log on to our website www.truthhilluniversity.com and you get all the details about the university and then you can register so that you're part of the next session starts first of september and ends somewhere at the first week of december thank you so much for listening god bless you have a great weekend ahead For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik's Alfred. <laughs>